Any mass or system of masses can be treated as a point mass in which all of the mass is concentrated in a point called the center of mass or otherwise known as the center of gravity. This point has no spatial dimensions. It is a geometrical construct. It is literally a point in space with no dimensions, in other words, no height, no thickness, no width. The only thing that the center of mass has is mass. The center of mass can be thought of as the balance point of a mass. It is the point at which mass is equally distributed along any axis passing through it. So the center of mass is the point that you can balance the mass on. And this is illustrated in the case of the irregularly shaped mass shown being balanced on the point of a pin. If an object or system of objects are far enough away, they behave in terms of their gravitational field as a point mass. And the illustrated example here is the Andromeda galaxy. So an object that is far away the irregularities in the gravitational field of that object tend to average out so that it actually behaves as if it was in fact a point mass. Point masses actually do exist in the form of the singularities at the heart of black holes. A singularity is a point in which all of the mass of the black hole has become so compacted that it no longer actually occupies any space. The event horizon at the edge of the black hole is the distance from the singularity at which light is no longer travelling fast enough to escape the gravitational pull of the singularity. Systems made up of two masses, such as binary stars, have their centre of mass located at a point along an axis between the two masses. The location of the centre of mass along this axis is determined by the ratio of the masses. The centre of mass may refer to any number of separate masses, such as all of the atoms making up a planet, all of the bodies in the solar system, all of the matter in the galaxy, or, for that matter, all of the particles in the universe. Gravitational fields. Gravitational fields can be represented or mapped using field lines. These are imaginary lines, a bit like latitude and longitude on the surface of the Earth, and they represent the direction of the force on a mass subjected to that gravitational field. You can think in terms of a one kilogram test mass, as this is the simplest example. Field lines end at the center of mass of a body and start at an infinite distance from the center of mass. In other words, the field lines continue from infinity to the center of mass. The field lines represent the direction of the force on an object and the distance apart of the field lines represents the strength of the force. So as you can see in the diagram, with the mass in the middle labelled as the Earth, as you get further away from the Earth, the field lines get further apart. Gravitational fields are radial in all directions and the gravitational field of a point mass is even in all directions. The field lines are an even, equal distance apart all around the point mass. In every direction, the field is homogeneous. As the field lines get further apart with increasing distance, the gravitational field of the point mass decreases. Equipotential surfaces are surfaces joining together all the points where the field strength is the same. So all of those points where the field lines are a particular distance apart can be joined together with an equipotential surface. In the diagram, these are shown as circles surrounding the mass in the center, which is labeled as the Earth, but they're in fact spheres which surround completely the point mass at a constant distance from the point mass. As the equipotential surfaces are spherical, the field strength decreases proportionally to the surface area of a sphere, and the surface area of a sphere is given by the equation A equals 4 pi r squared. So let's think of this in terms of the Earth. For an area A, a distance r, where r is the radius of the Earth, from the center of the mass of the Earth, 
acceleration due to gravity equals g. So in the area A in the diagram, acceleration due to gravity is equal to g. At a distance 2r, twice the radius of the Earth from the centre of mass of the Earth, the same number of field lines pass through an area that is four times the size of A. So if we have four field lines passing through an area A at a distance from the centre of mass equal to the radius of the Earth, at a distance 2r, twice the radius of the Earth, we have one field line passing through each area A. So at a distance r from the centre of mass of the Earth, acceleration due to gravity equals g. At a distance 2r, acceleration due to gravity equals g on 4. Because the force due to gravity, the strength of the gravitational field, decreases with the square of the distance from the centre of mass. So gravitational fields decrease in strength with the inverse square of the distance to the centre of mass. Summary. Any mass or system of masses can be treated as a point mass in which all of the mass is concentrated in a point at the centre of mass. The centre of mass can be thought of as the balance point of a mass. The centre of mass may be related to a single object, such as a planet or a star, or any number of objects, such as a solar system, a galaxy, or the entire universe. All massive objects are surrounded by a gravitational field which extends from the centre of mass of the object in all directions into space. In a gravitational field diagram, gravitational field lines represent the direction of the force a small test mass would experience as a result of the gravitational field. Equipotential surfaces are surfaces joining all of those points on the field lines with the same strength of gravitational field. Gravitational fields decrease in strength with the inverse square of the distance from the centre of mass, so that g is proportional to 1 on r squared. Thank you for watching.